Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff for this episode. Uh, over at makezine.com, there's a DIY uh, video over on uh, YouTube. It's called Automatic Camera Shutter Switch. Uh, there are a lot of times when you want to photograph something, but you can't be there with the camera. If you want to take aerial photographs with a pole or a kite, you need a way to control the camera without being up in the air yourself. In this project, I demonstrate a variety of ways that you can remotely or automatically control a camera. If your camera has a shutter switch terminal, then you can directly control the focus and shutter with an external circuit, such as a microcontroller. If your camera doesn't have a shutter switch terminal, then you can either add connections to the shutter button or you can use a servo to press the button for you. So basically what he's talking about is if you've got a DSLR similar to like this, for example, uh, if you'll notice, now this is a, a Canon uh, Digital Rebel XTI. Most DSLRs uh, will, will have this. One of the terminal outs here, um, let me get this uh, undone here. On the side, there's a video out that you can see here. And then right below that, there's a terminal out. I don't think you can see it very well, but it's the second little one. And then you've got your use in this particular camera, you have a USB out uh, right here. This terminal out um, is a connection for a remote trigger. And so uh, you can, uh, you know, mount this on a tripod. In this case, I've got just a handy little tripod mount down here, but you can mount this on a tripod and uh, remotely trigger it using that terminal as well as uh, hit the autofocus. Now, this is handy if you want to mount one of these cameras on a, on a, like a, this camera's a little heavy to do this. And some of the more prosumer light cameras do have the remote, tri uh, the remote trigger, but you can uh, mount this pointing down on a, um, on a, on a, uh, like a quadcopter or even a weather balloon and take it up and use it to trigger, you know, or have it, you know, a little timer circuit that triggers the focus and the shutter once, you know, once every 30 seconds or something, and basically take pictures until the card is full. It allows you to get overhead aerial photography. That's real handy. Um, if you know, not a lot of model rockets can shoot a camera this heavy yet, but if you have one of the lighter cameras, uh, that has the remote trigger. You can uh, shoot it up in a model rocket and take pictures uh, as it's coming down. There's a variety of applications. You can also do it for photographing wildlife. Um, if you can power the camera besides the battery, uh, some cameras uh, allow you to power the camera via the USB port. So as long as you can supply five volts to the USB port, the camera will continue to run and it won't run off of battery. Um, you can, and then use an external, a much larger external battery pack in that case. But either way, uh, you can also remotely trigger for photographing wildlife, uh, for time lapse photography. There's a variety of things. I'm, in case you haven't noticed, I kind of uh, have a thing for photography. Um, there's a variety of ways that that a variety of applications that you can use this for. So I I thought this was pretty cool. Um, definitely check it out. It's, worth taking a look at from uh hack a day uh they have a continuation of their can hat working which is their car area network or uh, uh i forget what else they call it but basically it's the network inside your car and the various connectors and everything odb2 obd2 uh, unified diagnostic services open xc um you know Check out the series. It's definitely pretty cool, especially if you are looking to do some neat stuff with your car. 
over at Ars Technica and their gears and gadgets slash product news and reviews section, Google Glass 2 is coming, finally compatible with prescription glasses. That's right. You'll be able to get uh, Google Glass 2 fitted with your prescription glasses if you wear prescription glasses. Uh, Google has announced that current owners of Google Glass called Glass Explorers will be eligible to swap out their existing Google Glass units for the new version. Uh, the next version of Glass will finally be compatible with people who already wear glasses via the future lines of shade and prescription frames. The second edition of Glass will also include a mono earbud, likely replacing the terrible bone conduction speaker in the current version, which, you know, is fantastic. Uh, it's I, personally, I find it a little disconcerting that it's mono only, but you know, it's better than what it was before. So, uh, the glass explorers will get three invites to the glass program to hand out to friends, just like the Gmail beta. Uh, you know, if access to Gmail costs $1,500 is one of the reasons why I haven't gone for this, uh, simply because it's 1500 bucks and I'm not sure that I would get $1,500 worth of use out of it. Um, back over at hack a day micro slice. I had to include this. I thought this was pretty neat. It's called micro slice. It's a tiny Arduino powered laser cutter. Uh, there's, um, he came up with a really simple design. It's microcontroller driven. It's called the micro slice. It's a little engraver slash laser cutter, depending on how thick the material is that you are uh, using. I thought it was cool. I thought I would share it with you. Definitely check it out if this is something you're looking at doing. There's a YouTube video that shows it in action. It's pretty neat. Over at Ars Technica, again, I know we're kind of flip-flopping between two websites, but they just had some really awesome content. Uh, 24 pages of Mavericks reviews. Ars readers react. That's right. Uh, Apple announced a slew of new products this past week for the coming year, including a Retina MacBook Pro, iPad Air, and OS X version 10.9 Mavericks. John Siracusa gave a monster review of OS X Mavericks. I've read it. It is fantastic. Definitely go check it out. Uh, this is just some of the feedback that uh, they link up to the Syracuse review here in this article. This article that we're talking about here is some of the feedback uh, that ours has gotten from the audience. Excellent stuff. Definitely, if you are uh, an OS X user, go check that out. Over at Gizmodo, NASA has a 622 megabits per second data connection. Not here on Earth. It's between here and the moon. I would love to have 622 megabits per second coming into this home office to the internet. That would be awesome. So anyway, pretty neat. NASA has smashed its record for transmitting data to and from the moon. It now boasts a 622 megabits per second transfer speed to the rock that circles our little planet. They are able to achieve this using lasers instead of radio waves to transmit data between its ground station in New Mexico and a spacecraft that's orbiting the moon 239,000 miles away. So it's part of the lunar laser communication demonstration. Uh, they were able to upload air-free data to the Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer spacecraft at a rate of 20 megabits per second. Uh, it beats previous attempts to send data through space using similar techniques. So pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. 20 megabits per second. I think I misread that. Anyway, really fast. I would love to have that speed. Okay, that'll do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.